Hi Bartonella buddies! Today I thought I would do a short video, although I always say I'm going to do a short video and then it ends up being a lot longer than I intended, so I'm going to try to actually make it short, but now I'm not doing a very good job, am I? In this video, I'm going to tell you about my experience with SIBO, which I have now had twice, and my experience will show you the following three things. Number one, get tested for SIBO, the hydrogen and the methane. And if that's negative, then you might want to pursue the hydrogen sulfide SIBO test. Number two, your SIBO numbers don't have to be sky high to be very symptomatic and very uncomfortable from SIBO. And number three, SIBO can make mast cell activation syndrome worse. And Dr. Afrin, I believe I will amend this if I'm wrong in the editing process, has published a paper in which he treated mast cell patients for SIBO and many of them saw symptomatic improvement. If I'm right about this, I'll put that link in the video description box. For those of you who don't know, SIBO stands for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. The most problematic way that my mast cell activation would manifest was with huge painful burps, belching, and gastritis and pain in the upper GI tract. I struggled with this extreme belching for almost two years and I still have the extreme belching. It's just not as bad as it was. That's how this relates to SIBO. I was first tested for SIBO a year after the mast cell symptoms started. Part of the reason why I didn't get tested earlier than that. I was very hesitant to do the SIBO test because I thought it would provoke a mast cell reaction with burping. In order to do the test, you have to take this formula, which is a sugary drink that is made out of lactulose. Another reason I didn't do the test was because I thought the belching was only mast cell activation related and not related to anything else. Another reason why we didn't think to test for SIBO was because when I looked up the symptoms, this is what I usually found. Loss of appetite, abdominal pain, nausea, bloating, an uncomfortable feeling of fullness after eating, diarrhea, unintentional weight loss, and malnutrition. From this list, there's no uncontrollable belching. I was still on the search for a good GI doctor, and I went and saw one that was integrative, yet he was an asshole. And he wanted me to test for SIBO, and I was like, all I have is belching. And he said, well, the gas has to come out somewhere. As much as this guy was an asshole, his statement that the gas has to come out somewhere was the first time where I was like, hmm, hmm, hmm. I did the SIBO test through Genova. The cutoff for the two gases, which are hydrogen and methane, were 20 and 10, respectively. My results were 21 and 11. And when I got my test back and Genova sent with it a document showing what an abnormal test might look like, I think the number for the hydrogen was 60. So I was like, mm, mine's only slightly abnormal. It's probably not contributing to my symptoms. On top of this, my two Bartnell literate medical doctors who are two very smart doctors, they were not impressed by these SIBO numbers. Therefore, neither was I. In many patients, you might just say, well, let's just try to treat the SIBO and see if it gets better. And for me, I'm so reactive. I knew I wasn't going to make it through a full course of antibiotics. You know, I might have not even lasted a couple days. So I never treated the SIBO. Now, this is where the story is going to get a little bit more unconventional. One of my Bartonella Illiterate Medical Doctors was looking at my stool sample from Diagnostic Solutions, and it's called a GI map. And he noticed that over time, my C. diff toxin levels were going up. I thought he was crazy, because I like to think I'm always right, but I think he likes to think that he's always right too, so we're a perfect match. For those of you who don't know, C. diff stands for Clostridium difficile. According to mainstream medicine, it's part of the normal intestinal flora and people's immune systems generally keep it in check. When C. diff manifests, it's usually through 
extreme diarrhea that can kill you. A lot of people in the hospital and especially people who are immunocompromised and older people can get C. diff and it can pose a really big problem to their health. Another way you can get extreme diarrhea from C. diff is by taking antibiotics that disrupt your normal intestinal flora and allow the C. diff to proliferate and then cause symptoms. So my GI map was showing that my C. diff was going up and up and up exponentially. One of my doctor's theories is that the C. diff is part of the reason that my mast cell activation is so severe. I don't know if I agree with him on that. And he wanted me to treat the C. diff because of this, even though I have no diarrhea. I kind of joke with my mom and some of my other doctors that I am the first patient in the history of the world to be treated for asymptomatic C. diff. So my doctor wanted me to treat it and I really didn't want to treat it. So then I asked my other partner, a literate medical doctor, if this was so crazy, and he was like, you know what? Crazier things have happened. Why don't you try it? So that's what led me to taking vancomycin and medrol. And if you'll recall in my previous videos called my Bartonella Breakdown and then my Bartonella Breakdown Revisited, I had a quite I had quite a hard time with the steroids and the vancomycin and it turned into a big mess but one good thing did come out of it the belching finally stopped after a year and a half so did the belching stop because the c diff went down or did the belching stop because the c bow went down my doctor thinks it's because of the c diff and i think it's because of the c bow and repeat testing after taking the vancomycin shows that both numbers go down so we might never know <laughs> And the Cebu, 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 that's the October Cebu, Cebu, happy Halloween, happy spooky season. I love Halloween. Here are just a few of my Halloween outfits that I have worn before. I might have to cut that off because some of them were very slutty, so... <laughs> the vancomycin and the medrol fiasco, right after that is when I developed my intolerance to sulfur. Sulfur is found in the highest amounts in meat, so I lost all of my safe meats. That's where I'm at today. I don't really know why I developed a sulfur intolerance after that. One doctor seems to think it's potentially because of this hydrogen sulfide SIBO. The other one seems to think, and he doesn't really explain it all that much to me, so I'm still confused by it, but the sulfur is kicking off my mast cells, and then his naturopath seems to think it's this epigenetic sort of switch that's been flipped on, and now I can't process sulfur well. I don't know. There's this new type of SIBO called hydrogen sulfide SIBO and it's very difficult to test for and only recently did they come out with a test as far as I'm aware which I have now but I'm not taking it yet and I'll get to that. The theory with the hydrogen sulfide SIBO is that certain types of bacteria, and I'm going to read from this website and I'll put the link down below, certain bacteria such as uh, Bacteroides species E. coli and particularly Desulfovibrio thrive on bile acids and a diet high in animal fat and animal protein. This video is not short at all, is it? So I think an argument could be made that the mast cell activation is getting kicked off by eating sulfur foods because the sulfur feeds this bacteria and then the mast cells are like, whoa, this is an imbalance and they're freaking out. So without getting too bogged down in the sulfur intolerance, which really could be its own separate video and its own separate research project, the main point is that with the sulfur intolerance, I then was only eating rice, potatoes, and about eight vegetables, which is a diet that can lead to developing SIBO. And just a little secret between you and me is I was eating yams every night and I was putting brown sugar, like a lot of brown sugar, and then my SIBO came back. But you can't blame me. My diet is so limited. It was like the it was like the only thing I looked forward to eating. Sneezy. <sighs>
<laughs> okay, I'm now retreating it with Zyfaxin, which will also treat the C. diff as well. And I will see how far through this course of Zyfaxin I get before the reactivity makes me crash and burn. So after this course of Zyfaxin, we will wait about a month and then retest and see where all of the numbers are for both the C. diff and the SIBO. If you're new to my channel, my name is Jake. And if you would like to be my Bartonella buddy, there are a few ways to do that. One is you can hit that subscribe button so you're notified when I post a new video. Two, you can join our Breaking Down Bartonella uh, Facebook support group. And three, you can check the video description box for my Instagram, Facebook, and email. Bye, Bartonella buddies! Don't like me. And happy spooky season! Piper, what are you gonna be for Halloween? I'm gonna wear your slutty nurse outfit. Piper! It wouldn't even fit you. Wait to the end of this video to see how Piper really feels about Halloween.